So, so, so far what we've talked about is we've looked at the vectors and we say, all right, all these vectors, they're equal to each other, right? We know that. Um, but you can see that they all have different names, right? And they all have different initial and terminal points, right? And they, right now they're just on a plane. And if you guys can kind of remember what we've talked about before is, you know, working on somewhere you kind of standardize this, right? Somewhere where we can kind of make sense of all this, but keep them in the same formation. Kind of like when we dealt with, uh, you know, the unit circle, we kind of used that unit circle as kind of a guideline. When we talk about equations, a lot of times we had like standard formulas that we use, like the quad, um, like quadratic form or in slope intercept form. We had standard forms that helped us kind of bring all of those equations together to a form that we could base everything off of. So right now we just talked about our vectors with initial side terminals or initial point terminal point. We can name them as long as we know they have the same size and directions that are equal to each other. But if we're going to start comparing vectors, we need to kind of have something to base them off of, right? Right. Right now they're just on this plane and they can be all over. All we know is as long as they're on there and they have the same and the same qualities, then they're equal. But we need some way to start comparing vectors and also to be able to work with them a little bit easier. So. What we did is we uh, look back and we say, yeah, let's think of somewhere where we could do this. How about if we apply vectors on the coordinate plane? By meaning the coordinate plane, I mean, what about on the x and y axis? Now, you guys remember when we were doing with angles, we, kinda, we did this exact same formation, right? We talked about an initial side and a terminal side. And because if we didn't talk about initial sides and terminal sides, and we didn't say your initial side was always on your x axis, then when we were talking about angles, we could have angles all over the place, right? Right? There'd be, no, there'd be no organization if we didn't say, hey, here's your initial side. Go in the counterclockwise direction if it's positive, the clockwise direction if it's negative. If we didn't have that organization, we would just be, everybody would have a different definition of how an angle should be drawn, right? So vectors is the same thing. Look, at, I already wrote three different examples of this exact same vector. It's the exact same vector, but it's written three different ways. So if I, tell you to, if I give you a vector and I say draw it, you might have a different example of what he's going to have. So what we came up with is looking at the component form of a vector. And what the component form of a vector is going to tell us is we want to have our initial point is at 0, 0. All right, so component form, you guys are going to want to have this down. All right, so when you have a component form of your vector, what you're going to do is you're going to have, um, your component form of a vector is going to have your initial point at 0, 0. All right. Then your terminal point is going to be, you know, obviously wherever else you're going to choose. Now, let's go and take a look at, let me go and erase the rest of these vectors here. And let's go and take a look at, if I created a point, right, if I have my point P, well, just like we have regular points on a unit circle, we know we have, uh, we have x and y coordinates, right? So for this vector, right now this is just on a plane. What we're going to deal with, we could say that P has two coordinates, P1 and P2. Q has two coordinates, Q1 and Q2. Just like your x and your y's, right? They're going to have two different coordinates. All right, so if I want to find the component form, it's it's going to be very, very similar to just finding pretty much the change in these two values. So what we're going to do when I want to write the component form, all right, I'm going to have not parentheses, but we're going to use these little arrow points. And I'll, and I'll explain that to you guys in a second. So what that's going to be is q1 minus p1, comma, um, q2 minus P2. So all we're simply doing is we're taking the change, we're pretty much finding the change in our x values, and we're then finding the change in our y values to create a coordinate point. Does 
So therefore, what we call this, all right, if I want to find my vector form, and we call this v, right? This is our unit vector v. So if I take my directional line segment and I write it like this, we call our component form a vector v. That's going to equal v1 comma v2. All right? And I'm going to use v1 and v2 a lot of times. All right? we'll, and we'll, I'll go through an example here in a second. But when, I, when I'm talking about using v1 and v2 of a vector, that are, when I use v1 and v2, you need to understand v1 comes from the change in your, your kind of x-coordinates, and v2 comes in the change pretty much of your y-coordinates. All right? But this is what your component form is going to look like. We'll go through an example. It'll probably make a little bit more sense when we use some real numbers. right? So I'll get to that in a second. We have one more thing to go over with that. OK, so that is the component form.